Hey everyone, welcome back to science. We're going to be continuing with chapter two today, uh, working on lesson 2.5. Uh, good to see everyone again. Just want to be making sure that you are grabbing a piece of paper and something to write with. Hopefully you've got a pencil. I know in the past we talked a little bit about having a pencil's handy. That way if you realize you make a mistake, you don't have to go back and scratch it off. You can just erase it and keep going. So if you have not gathered those for today's lesson, just a reminder, pause the video now uh, and you can go ahead and grab those things so that you can be as successful as possible for our lesson today. For those of you who do already have your pencil and paper, we're going to jump right into our lesson because we have a two-part warm-up today. So for our first part of our warm-up, we're going to continue to be thinking about uh, a timeline of something, but we're going to think about it in a little bit different way today. Uh, we discussed, I think it was in last lesson, a little bit about evolutionary history and about how evolutionary time takes place over a really, really long sequence of time, millions and millions of years. So what we're going to be thinking about today is not so much about the specific amount of time, but we're going to be sequencing and putting into order the four main events that take place when organisms go through the process of evolution. So on your paper, you're going to start off by writing uh, these statements and then putting a number by them. The numbers are gonna be indicating the order in which those statements uh, would happen for a species in their own evolutionary history. So again, number one, you're gonna put for the very first thing that happens, and then number four is gonna be the last thing that would happen to that species, or the mo most recent thing that would happen in their process of evolution. I'm gonna read through these. As I'm reading through, you're gonna to wanna to start to think for yourself, what order are they in? And then if you don't get it on the very first time, you can pause the video and you can reread through them uh, independently, or you can go ahead and rewind the video. And of course, I will reread them for you again if you go back to the beginning of this. So let's read through those statements so that we can go ahead and move into the second part of our warm-up after we get this done. All right, the statement that is first here says, two descendant populations are very similar but have small differences in their structures. An ancestor population is living in a stable environment. Two descendant populations look very different, even though they have many similar structures. An ancestor population gets separated into different environments. So again, these four statements are currently not in the order that they happen for an organism in its evolutionary pro uh, process. So figure out which order you would like to put those in, pausing the video now, and again, rewinding if you want me to read through those one more time. But I'll give you a second to go ahead and think about it. And then once you are done, you can move on and we will continue into the second part of our warm up. Okay, so hopefully you got done with that first part of the warm up. For those of you guys who are wrapped up, we're gonna be working in uh, moving on to the second part here, which is gonna be a little bit of a reflection. And I wanna push you to make sure you're thinking about not worrying too much at this point in the lesson about whether or not you are right or whether or not you're wrong. Because this is our big chapter two question, which if you've forgotten, it's a good time to be reminded. So the chapter two question that we're really trying to solve is how did wolves, whales, and the mystery fossil become so different from their common ancestor populations? What forced them to start to have changes in their bodies that ended up uh, making them species that were completely different? So this is some time where you can reflect on what you've learned so far. It's not, like I was saying again, it's not a time to worry about being right or wrong, but it's a time to think about what do you know so far? Because as we go through the lesson and when we get to the end of today's lesson and the end of this chapter in our next lesson, hopefully you will have a pretty strong understanding of this. And if you're not quite there yet, that's okay. This is a time to kind of figure that out so that you can reground yourself in this thinking as we continue through this unit. So pause now, jot down your ideas. Uh, you might not need you to even write in complete sentences, but jot down a few things that you're thinking. How did wolves, whales, and the mystery fossil become so different from their common ancestor population? 
Give you a second to think that over by pausing the video now. All right, hopefully you had some good time to think about uh, what you are thinking uh, is causing these species to end up becoming different over those millions and millions of years which we've talked about. What we're gonna be thinking about to start off today is uh, we're gonna be looking at a little mini simulation in our Amplify. Uh, online in our Amplify, we're gonna pull up this simulation together. So we're gonna pull this up in a second, but I'm gonna kind of walk you through some of the things that you're gonna to wanna to think about in case you wanna pause the video here and work through it independently. I know we go over this a lot, but just remember if you are going through these by yourself and thinking independently, it really provides you with the best learning opportunity possible. Um, and if you are watching it with me and kind of doing the thinking with me, that's great as well. But I wanna push you if you're feeling like you can take this on yourself, definitely go ahead and do that. So we have two different uh, branches that are gonna be coming off here in two different environments. In one of the environments, we've got some structural changes over here that we're gonna start to figure out which of these images could we pull in and drop into these locations over here that's gonna model for environment A, our species having longer tails and thicker backbones. Then for environment B, which is the second branch of the tree down here, we're gonna be looking for what, stru uh, what structural changes are we seeing that match with environment B, which it says up here are larger back limbs and larger front limbs, okay? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. We will continue in just a second so that you can follow along with me. But again, if you do have access to this at home, you may wanna just find this in lesson 2.5 for yourself and work through it independently. All right, so I'm back and we have now pulled up this Amplify modeling tool, um, which is really fun because we've got all sorts of different uh, structures over here that you're gonna start to notice have some uh, organisms, I should say, that have similar structures over here. Um, and we've got this organism right here. So the First thing I want us to do is I want us to start to think about if this is the organism that ends up being split into two different um, types of organisms, is that gonna be our ancestor, our common ancestor population, or is that gonna be our descendant species? So think about that for a second. Is this guy gonna end up being the descendant or is this uh, fossil right here the common ancestor population? Hopefully, as you were thinking about that, you remember that this is gonna be the common ancestor. Remember that each of these is gonna end up being a descendant and that those descendants are going to share that common ancestor. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I've got each of these labeled as descendant species because all four of these are gonna be descending or coming from our original ancestor here. So now let's get into the structure. We're gonna be looking here and what I notice is that in environment A, we ended up with some animals that had longer tails and thicker backbones. So as I start to look over here, I'm noticing there are definitely different tail lengths. There are also different thickness levels in terms of those spines. And if we think about it, hopefully you remember that those spines, if they're becoming thick, they're not just gonna instantly go from this small sort of thin spine all of a sudden and jump to a really massive, really thick boned spine. Those evolutionary changes are gonna take place over time. So if we're looking for organisms that have a uh, thicker backbone, we're not gonna probably pick one of the ones that has a huge backbone. So I'm gonna look for some, and we're noticing as I'm looking here, I've got this guy, this guy, they both have about the same thickness of a spine. Uh, I could probably eliminate those as well as this one. So then I'm starting to look, and I have found this guy right here. It has the same structure for its head. The limbs are looking really similar. So I am gonna go ahead and drag him 
to the first population. Now, you might be wondering, hey, Mr. Bond, you didn't even think about the longer tails. Well, I like to break it down into the individual structures, and now I'm gonna go back, and you're right, I do need to double check to make sure that its tail is becoming longer. And again, same as I was thinking with the spine, you don't wanna pick a spot, uh, of organism that's going to be the first step in that evolutionary process that has the longest tail in the world. But what we do notice here is that the tail has gotten longer. So I'm feeling pretty confident with my answer. Next thing I'm gonna to start to look for is I am gonna be okay with some of these longer type organisms with a thicker spine because this indicates time two. So over time two, um, you're going to notice that that spine could get thicker and that the second thing that we don't want to forget is that our tail also is going to get longer. So breaking it down over here, it's starting to get easier because we don't have as many organisms as we had before. We've got two with thick spines and I notice that this guy right here has a much longer tail than this one. In fact, in this one, if we were to pick this organism, his tail would have shrunk from there to there and that is not going to be representing those evolutionary changes in the structure as this branch is evolving in our evolutionary tree. So for the last step here, what I want you to do is pause the video. We've got four different species right here on the right. Two of them are going to go here. They're going to be species that end up having a larger back limb and a larger front limb. Remember that those changes aren't going to be instant. They're not going to happen overnight. So you want to make sure that you're not just jumping to something that has the largest back limbs and the largest front limbs possible. So pause here, think about that, and then we'll come back together in a moment. All right, hopefully you got a chance to start to think through which of these you're going to you're gonna um, have me, I guess, drag through and place into these spots unless you decided that you wanted to leave the video and go do it independently. Uh, then maybe you're going to do it yourself. So I'm going to look over here, and the first thing I'm going to be looking for is, well, we're going to have a species that has larger front limbs and larger back limbs. So what I look at over here, I'm just going to make sure I've got the sizes of those correct. And what we're noticing is uh, kind of the other piece I'm looking for is that the tail is not changing like it did in the last one and that the uh, spine is not changing either. So this one I notice my spine and my tail are similar and then I'm double checking. I'm going to get it just a little bit closer so I can see. And then yes, look, my arms have gotten a little longer. They're not massive, but they have gotten longer. So now I'm down to three. This has a giant spine. I'm just not even going to look at that one. This one has a giant tail. I'm not even going to look at that one. I'm going to take this one, drag it in there, and then double check to see if my process of elimination helped me and worked. I'm going to check the back limbs. Yes, over time my back limb got longer. I'm going to check my front limb, and yes, over time my front limb got longer. So we can see these descendants ended up having some better structures for survival in their own environments. So uh, as we kind of wrap this up, we're gonna move into our next activity and continue through the lesson. Hopefully this gave you a good visual so you can see how over time those changes could build up. And if these were to continue, these species, the common ancestor might end up looking really different uh, from what the uh, descendant species end up looking like. Okay, I've brought us back to our slideshow here, and what's important, especially whenever we use a modeling tool, we do a lab, we do a simulation, is that we take some time to think through and reflect about what we saw, because we use those tools to help us better understand evolution. So what I want you to do now is just pause the video. You've got your piece of paper, you've got your pencil. These are two reflection questions that you can think through. The first one asks, how does this model, the one we were just in, so you can rewind if you need to, show how species that share a common ancestor can become very different from one another? Second question is gonna ask us, what remains stable over time in our model? And then what did we notice was some of the very specific changes uh, that we saw. So go ahead, pause the video, give yourself some time 
Really push yourself to think critically and to answer these with the most explanation and the most detail you can. All right. Now, our next activity is something that you may have done in class. Uh, you may have not done it in class. It's called word relationships. And I just got done in the last part of the lesson uh, talking about how we really want to push ourselves to be able to think through uh, and explain in the highest level of detail possible. That is something you're going to want to really continue to push yourself on as we go into this word relationships activity where your job is to answer this question. How did wolves, whales, and the mystery fossil become so different from their common ancestor population? Which, guess what? You're right. You have answered that before. You answered it in the warm-up. So hopefully, maybe even your warm-up was right on track. And now what you need to do is just start to think through and make sure you're following these rules as you're pushing yourself to answer this question. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use two words from our word bank. So here are some of our options. We've got common ancestor population, descendant species, evolutionary time, shared structure, and speciation. You're going to want to make sure that you're answering this in more than one sentence. This is going to be a question that is pretty detailed and something that shouldn't be able to be something that you answered in one uh, sentence. In, in fact, it might even be hard to get two of the words from our word bank into that one sentence. So that's step one. Make sure you're using two words, make sure you're using more than one sentence, and then another step you can take to push yourself is to try and answer this question twice. Try and answer it in a different way and maybe even using some different words. So go ahead now, pause the video, and take some time to answer this question and we'll come back in a second. If you need help with your vocabulary and working those into your answer, pause the video here so that you can take a look at those different vocab words to help you make sure you're getting at least two of them in your answer. Just wanted to show you one more time in case you had forgotten the rules here for our word relationships. Maybe you want to stop and double check if you've already started to work that you are using these three rules right here to make sure your word relationships are really pushing yourself as much as we are expecting of you as your teachers. So if you need to pause here again and make sure that you have followed these rules. And if you've forgotten these, just remember, scroll back a few seconds in the video and you'll be able to see those definitions. Okay, hopefully you came up with some answers that you are happy with because we are actually almost already done with the unit for today. Uh, to wrap up, what you are going to be thinking about is back to our mystery fossil, back to everything we've looked at so far. Which exhibit do you think the mystery fossil most belongs to? And you might be thinking to yourself, I don't know, how am I going to make a decision? Well, I got a couple things that are gonna help you out. So just make sure you remember that you're either gonna have to answer and you're gonna say that I think the fossil belongs in the whale exhibit or I think it belongs in the wolves exhibit. You may have already started to think about this and that is great, but as we continue, hopefully you're becoming more sure and you're finding ways to include some more evidence to back up whichever of these claims that you are supporting. So as you're answering, here are some things that may help. I've got a letter here that told us some information about our fossil. Okay, this was back when we were wrapping up uh, chapter one and starting our chapter two. Also, here is that mystery fossil. If you need to take a look, you might make some qualitative observations, some observations by describing the structures of that uh, mystery fossil and then relating that to what you know about either the whale or the wolf. Lastly, this is gonna be super helpful for you and it's actually something that you already have created. We compared in a previous unit some of the structures that we noticed were in each of these. So here was our T-chart we created um, back, I don't remember the specific lesson, I think it might have been about three lessons ago, but this is gonna be something that might help you to make a decision of where you think this fossil fits the best. 
Here's the structures we saw in our whale fossil. And then here is what we saw with the wolf body structure. So if you need to, you can use those to kind of help you to provide some evidence to support your point in saying which of those structures you most think that uh, the mystery fossil belongs with. So that's kind of all for today. Um, I'm going to make sure that you've got that last slide up so that you can just pause the video at the end, answer that question, and we'll see you for next time where we're actually going to be wrapping up our final, final uh, lesson for chapter two before we begin uh, chapter three. So it's kind of exciting that we're starting to narrow this down and figure it out. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time. Take care.